All right, so at this point, I've uh, coated all of my cotton squares with the dye, you know, the sensitizer solution. And now I brought them over to where I have a UV set up. Now, you probably won't have something like this in your home, and you can use the sunlight if you don't have this. Um, I set this up because it lets me do this, you know, on days where there is no sunlight. If it's cloudy, it lets me do it at night. Um, but most importantly, it gives me very uh, reliable, accurate, and reproducible um, amounts of exposure time. You know, it's hard to really tell on a sunny day. You know, some days are sunnier than others, and the human eye can't necessarily pinpoint that. So there's some variability if you're using the sun. You really have to kind of guess and estimate or use trial and error to figure out how long you want to expose it. With this setup, I have pretty standardized times and I can just, you know, plug in the same time and know I'm going to get pretty much the same result. Um, when you're figuring this out, you know, it does take a little bit of experimenting to figure out what you want your exposure time to be. On the bottle, there are recommended times. Um, for instance, for the blue, they recommend that it uh, takes 10 minutes on a sunny day or 20 minutes on a cloudy day. But again, that, all of that's pretty, uh, pretty variable. <clears throat> um, what I do to figure out how long I want to do it is I make a couple of test strips. So these are just scraps of fabric. Um, in this case, I use brown. And you can see this one I wrote uh, brown 10 minutes, and this one is brown 20 minutes. So I just coat these with the sensitizer, set them up under here. I put it under, both of them go under for 10 minutes, and then I put something on top of one of them and put it back under for another 10 minutes. So the one that was covered only had 10 minutes of light. The one that was uncovered had 20 minutes of light. Um, I find that the Solar Fast isn't super responsive. You know, if you were using cyanotype or um, some kind of silver gelatin component, uh, 10 minutes would be way too far apart. You know, 10 minutes and 20 minutes would be way too far apart for a test strip. You'd want uh, more graduation in there. For the solar fast, this gives me a pretty good idea, and I can kind of dial it in from there. So you can see here, I'm trying to find a good place to hold them. Even if you can't see, I'll just tell you. This is the 10-minute one, and it's um, it's much paler than the 20-minute one. So I decided that, oh my gosh, this is terrible. There we go. I decided that 20 minutes was good for the brown. Um, sometimes I go in the middle and I'll do 13 minutes, I'll do 15 minutes. Um, it, it's kind of a matter of preference. The moral of the story for you is that you can make these little scraps to test out before you, you know, use like a big piece of fabric that you may have spent a bunch of money on. Do a test strip first. Now, um, I mentioned I have UV lights under here. I use uh, regular black lights. Uh, at Walmart, at least in my area, they sell a $10 black light fixture. Um, and it's the whole, you know, it's the fixture and the bulb all packaged together. This is my enlarger table. I have a big color enlarger over here. And I just mounted those UV lights to the underside of this table. And then I have this, you know, this is like a drawer that I can slide in and out. So I got this idea from somebody on one of the darkroom groups on Facebook. Um, it's a really great idea because those lights take up a fair amount of space, but it's all space that's like underutilized anyway. So the whole thing kind of just folds up and I can use my enlarging table, um, the way it was intended to. I have eight of those lights underneath here. Um, you certainly don't need eight. I think I started with four. Um, the more lights you have, they're 24 inch lights. So you have a bit of quite a bit of distance width wise, but the more lights you have, the wider, you know, the more you're able to come out this way. So I have eight of them stacked under there and I can illuminate pretty much this whole area here. If you only have four, you're gonna be, you know, constrained a little bit. Um, this is the solution I chose because it's fairly inexpensive, you know, 80 bucks for all of the fixtures and the bulbs um, is fairly reasonable for an exposure unit of this size. Uh, some other exposure, you know, electronic exposure solutions, those little uh, like face tanners, they have those UV lights. They're either for tanning or they're for um, seasonal depressive disorder, affective disorder. You know, it's for people who get sad in the winter. Um, and uh, you can use those. I started with one of those also, actually. Um, they sell different like 
LED UV stuff online now. So if you go online and find UV, um, from my understanding, the plant bulbs don't work quite as well because it's a different range of UV light, but they will still do the trick. Um, to actually make the print, I have all of my leaves laid out here. Um, you know, you just kind of position whatever you're using on top of the fabric the way you would want to use it. You know, I'm using leaves today. I've used fern leaves. This one's kind of dried out. It's at the end of its life. But I save all of these ridiculous things to use for this. You know, I have like turkey feathers. Um, I have bits of like lace. This is great for like old vintage lace that may be like ripped or torn. You know, you can make beautiful patterns with the lace. Um, so you lay that out on top of your fabric. You want to make sure that when you're moving it, you keep the side that you brush the sensitizer on on top. Um, and this product, they recommend that you use it while it's wet. It doesn't have to be used immediately. Like you can leave it to sit, let, sit around for a few minutes to kind of soak in, but you don't want to let it dry on the fabric. So after I have everything set up, I have some glass here. We put the glass down and that keeps the leaves uh, making close contact with the fabric. And that's called registration. That's important because that makes sure you get a very crisp uh, outline in your final product. If you don't do that, you'll have much softer edges. And if the object is kind of too big and bulky, uh, you'll have like, sometimes the edges can get so soft that you can't even tell what the object is. For something like leaves, I just use the weight of the glass to hold this down. For something like feathers, I would put a board underneath it like this and then put the glass. And then I use like these giant binder clips and uh, I would just like clip the glass to the board, you know, creating the sandwich. And that just helps to like press the feathers down so they make better contact. That makes a really big difference with things like feathers or sometimes even fresh leaves. The dried leaves are, are thin enough where they'll be fine. So that's all set, ready to go. I'm gonna slide this under and I'm gonna turn on my UV lights. So there's that. And then I'm going to go over to my darkroom timer. I'm doing this for uh, 13 minutes. Come on. So I have this set for 13 minutes. Just going to turn it on. And when that dings, we're going to turn the light off and wash the prints. So we'll be back for that.